Welcome back to another installment of Death Metal. Now, today we're checking out some dark stories from the Dark Multiverse, or more like the Multiverse Who Laughs. Now, these stories are written by Scott Snyder, James Tynan, Patton Oswald, Amanda Connor, Saladin Ahmed, Brandon Thomas. All these different writers are really good writers, guys. Like Scott Snyder, James Tynan, Amanda Connor. Like those are some big names. Now we also have some good artists on here as well. And there's some different stories. All there's a total of five stories. And every single one have a different tone. Like, yeah, every single one is dark. Like, obviously, these are supposed to be dark stories. But they're actually pretty interesting. So, if you guys are ready, let's dive into Dark Knight's Death Metal, The Multiverse Who Laughs, number one. We begin with the Robin King on his throne of dead Batman. And he says, Hi there, I didn't see you on the other side of the fire, sitting with my, all my little groblins. Come sit closer, please. I was just getting ready to tell my friends here a scary story or two, and you should hear them. I mean, holy smokes, we're almost at the end now. The old regime is tumbling down and we're ripping out its insides and feasting on them. And you don't understand what's possible now, do you? Oh joy, where, oh, where do I begin? Do I start with Superman? Do I start with Diana? Robin King goes to the different origins of the Trinity of the DC Universe. But what he then says is, no, no, no. These are stories you've heard before. Let me tell you new and exciting stories. And all the Groblins cheer. They are loud. They're excited. Now, Robin King goes on to say how the Darkest Night has taken over the multiverse and has come a god, and how he's fighting out against Perpetua as he speaks. Now, he goes on to say some dark stories, like a world where the last son of Krypton was just a wee baby boy in his wee baby rocket ship when he passed through a cosmic radiation storm from a black hole. By the time he crashed in Smallville, he's left with a powerful hunger that could only be satisfied with burying human flesh. He goes on to talk about a world where the Flash gave his speed to humans and they became vicious predatory speed monsters and within hours, ultimate death occurred. Now, he also talks about a world where Marsh Manter is pretty much the alien. He just started going around, getting hosts of humans, and you see alien Marsh Manters just coming out of human stomachs, or people's stomachs, right? So it's basically just alien, but Marsh Manhunter is the alien, right? Pretty interesting. But then we also got a world where Diana, one woman, got the god Zeus, took his head off, killed him, and she became the god. She became the leader. Now we also have a world where Jon Stewart, he became Parallax, and he enslaved the world. This one I'm actually very intrigued about. I'd like to see an actual issue about this. Because we've seen Kyle Rayner and how Jordan become Parallax before, but Jon Stewart, not at all. Now we also got a world where Aquaman, he's pretty much like a sea creature, and he's a very, he's kind of like a monster now, he's like a monster head, and he takes over the world and just kills people, he drowns the world. Now we also have a world where Lois Lane is leading the people of Earth, the Daily Planet. She has the Green Lantern's rings, she has a Superboy Prime mecha suit, she has Aquaman's tridents, and she's fighting and killing all the heroes because they've gone evil. Now, we also have Robin King, he continues to say, See, this is the good stuff. These are the stories grown-ups should tell kids like us. Because these are how it really is out there. The bright stories that they tell us, those are the stupid dreams. But this is not a dream, my groblins. This is not hoax, this is real, this is now, this is forever. Because you realize what we have to do. To really defeat the old stories, we have to sully them. We have to take them with so much horror and grime that nobody will ever believe them to be the shy example. That's the genius of our new god, our darkest knight. Each of these worlds is a sharp and deadly weapon. This is how they lose. All the heroes on their stupid little world, they're about to understand a multiverse who laughs it's a multiverse that wins. Now, are you ready to turn that page, dear reader? Because the horrors out there are ready for you. Now, going into our second story, we see Zoss. He has one of his eyes are gone. He's chained to this van. Now, he gets out. And he gets into this asylum. 
He comes, he starts transforming a little bit. This whole Arkham Wasteland transforms you into a monster. But Zaz is fighting back a little bit. At least his genes are. Now, he makes the Arkham. And, you see the van, it stops. And he walks out. And this man says, I hope we meet as friends, Victor. And Victor says, You're Amadeus Arkham. And Amadeus says, Amadeus, uh, God leaps the name, saw the movie in high school though. Real corker, made me take up a bowl for a while, but then I discovered mathletes, and that was all she wrote, Har. <sighs> they walk inside this room, group therapy, and Kite Man says, I don't know why, I just, I guess I just like kites. And the man says, wonderful Charles, and Zaz just waits. And the man goes by Zaz and says, would you like to tell something to our sharing circle, uh, Victor? And a man by Victor says, Stay out of the sharing circle, new best friend. And that's when Victor grabs his knife and says, I'll let the male speak for myself. And he puts a knife to this man's neck. And the man's scared. Now Victor is put into reassessment. And he says, There's no fixing me, don't you see? Now, the man says, I don't, Victor. And they continue to talk. Victor says, the only hope is transformation. Transformation, Doctor. You understand? The Doctor looks at him. Victor continues, you should do to me what got done to the heavy hitters. Dent. Jones. Victor knows that all these different villains were transformed. Made better. Now the Doctor says, ah, they are much improved. Now Victor says, exactly. Yes, yes, yes. These trickery treaters you have me in with are nuts. Now, the doctor says, Well, I don't believe in name calling, Victor, but I do believe in radical responses to extreme beat behavior. Now, Victor says, Gimme, gimme. Now, we go to therapy once again. Victor is cutting himself for all the different victims he has killed. Now, the doctor walks in. Those are the pre colors, Victor. Victor is drawing. Now, that's when we see Kite Man, he's drawing as well. And the doctor says, everything is a kite. And Kite Man says, I want it to be. And the doctor responds, it can be, Charles, come with me. Kite Man says to the, and the doctor says, sharing circle. Victor walks in, no, wrong, we see the sharing circle. Kite Man is under these sheets. The doctor says, Victor. I don't want to be rude, but I'm busy with Kite Man. Victor says, I have killed hundreds. I've wrenched your life from this planet and etched every loss into my flesh. The doctor responds, you murdered 117 people and kept accounts. Victor shouts, and you're going to give this gimmick monkey the gift of deathless flesh and living metal? The doctor says, yes. And Victor shouts even more, you crawling pencil pusher. The doctor says, I do not crawl. Victor points at the sheets and Kite Man. You are going to eject me with that Trank Gun and strap me to that table. You are going to transform me or you'll spend the rest of your painful life dreaming of being able to crawl. The doctor says, your first 10 warrants were correct. He shoots Victor with a gun. Now, aiming the gun at Victor, the doctor says, don't try to speak, Victor. As you can probably tell, that wasn't a tranquilizer. Far from it. I apologize for the pain you're experiencing, but it's necessary. The high level of pain is so to immobilize you. Charles will be hungry once he's done transforming. A fear filled bad bag of blood and adrenaline will help with the transfusion. Oh, here comes another surge, I'm afraid. As I said earlier, you murdered 117 people mindlessly, artlessly, compulsively. The dark metal craves violence, but it also craves craft. We have more than enough killers, Victor. The surface of the earth is crawling with and cleansed by them. Now we see Kite Man. He gets up and screams he's been transformed. The doctor walks away smiling. We have death. Darkness is sorrow. Now we want music, poetry, and whimsy. Our music. You wouldn't like it. So now we've seen a new guy come by, and you see Cornelius, this guy who eats people. And you see another man come with them. And this other man is the Condiment King. They both walk in, and the doctor leads them in. And when the doctor leads them into the room, the sharing room, the sharing circle, you see all the different villains, including Kite Man and Victor. They've been transformed into monsters. 
Now on another dark world, we see Crypto, the super dog. He arrives on Earth, and now it has like a Saturn-like look. It has circles around it, rings, and all these people are out in space, dead. So, uh, Crypto makes it to the Hall of Justice. He's curious. He says, hello, is anyone home? And that's when we see one of the different super pets. Damn, the super pet says, hey, Crypto, we are in here. You're back. It's so good to see you. Now, Crypto says, Great Scott, Comet, what happened? Comet says, uh, I don't know. Now, the cat says, What happened was that you weren't here when we needed you most. Now, another super pet, a dog, says, Streaky, this was not Crypto's fault. Streaky says, It wasn't? If you had been here, we ack. We should have ack. And that's when the dog says hairball. That's when this cat releases a hairball on the ground and continues to say, As I was saying, if you had been here, we would have had a better chance of getting this under control. Now, we see this monkey, this ape, and a Superman costume come out. Ace, the bat hound, is right by him. Ace, the bat hound, says how they are barely alive. But, the super monkey says, it all started here in the Hall of Justice. We are going over the day's events, catching up with everyone's latest adventures. What happened? They are all talking. They are having a meeting. But that's when we see this big monster of a pet come by. You're a boom and shots. He starts to attack. But Streaky says, Red Medvo. Red Medvo starts to attack them. And all the super pets attack. But this Red Medvo creature this villain. He has a virus. He is uncontrollable. He starts to attack, but the super monkey barely, barely takes him out with a shot. A boom, 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 and they trank dart him. He falls to the ground. Now, they put him in a containment cell of water, and the super ape tries to figure out what's going on, but that's when all the super pets stop talking. And the super ape says, guys, all the super pets start to attack him. But the super ape uh, closes the door and says, yikes, computer in initiate co containment sequence. Super pets, hold tight. I'll try to find some kind of cure. Stay right there and do your best to remain calm. Now, the super pets unleash upon the world. You see super cow unleashes its acids onto those people. All these people start getting infected by the virus. Arkham Asylum, you see Penguin, Joker. Everyone is getting infected and they're dying. They only have 19 hours to live. These super pets start attacking cowboys all around the world. Now, the super ape hits um, two of his super pets. He hits them with trank darts and barely saves them. Turns out everyone else died. Now, Crypto says, Oh no, Beppo, I imagine it wasn't. Were you able to share the treatment with any others? So Beppo is the name of this super ape. And the super ape says, Others? Didn't you notice when you came back to Earth? Crypto says, What? And Beppo says, Oh dear, my boy. All on Earth are dead. We're the sole survivors. I only had time to produce enough of the cure for us. Now, Beppo continues, once the virus takes hold, death occurs in 19 hours. I had to act quickly to save our team. Now, that's when we see all the different super pets who were, um, before they were just cured, right? Beppo cured them, but now they're getting ferocious again. They're getting vicious. They start to attack, and Crypto and Beppo are stuck. They don't know what to do, and they are transformed, and all of Earth is transformed by this virus, and the super pets remain supreme. Now, we shift to another world. It's new on subsector 070, formerly known as Star City. We see his brother and sister running. The boy says, you sure this is the right way? The sister says, I'm telling you, the message said he'd be down this alley. Now, they make it down the alley, but that's when we see Oliver Queen, the green arrow, an older green arrow. He says, they're not going to catch you here. Now, that's when we see these different robots come by. Oliver shoots his arrows and takes them out. The boy says, you really are him. I'm Mansa, and this is my sister. But that's when Oliver pushes them aside and tries to get him out of the way of the robots. Oliver says, later, yeah, you two were brave enough to make it this far. But we got to get to the safe house before. Oh, crap. And the sister says, no. We see Hal join the Green Lantern. He shows up, and Oliver says, Hal, been a few years. Hal says, you're a fugitive, Ollie. You're teaching these kids treason, and you're going to get you all killed. Oliver says, treason? 
This is Earth, man. Our planet. No one told your precious guardians they could take it over. Hal says the guardians have brought order and peace. You remember how bad this place was before they came. Oliver says, you really believe that, huh? You've changed, Green Lantern. Sure, you used to be a uh, stiff. But you were a good man, the best man I knew. But now you're talking about killing kids? Kids? The boy and the girl hold each other tight. They're afraid. Now, Oliver says, just take it off, please. Take off that ring. And Hal says, I can't. Earth needs to be protected. Now, Oliver takes out his arrow, which is melted with yellow cider, which yellow hurts Green Lanterns. Now, he puts his arrow up to Hal Joy, and he says, well, this arrow's got your name on it. They begin to fight, and that's how we end the, our story. This dark world is controlled by Hal Jordan the Green Lantern and the Guardians. There's order and peace, but there's also everyone is enslaved. They are ruled upon, and Oliver wants to stop this. Now we go to our last evil world, and we see that fear has taken over the city. Everyone has fear. And we see John Paul Valley. He has his mask on. He's fighting back. But these two men take the mask off. And he screams. Now he looks up. And he sees that these two men are Bane. And this evil Batman from Nightfall. John Paul Valley's Batman. Now Bane says, Where did you get that mask, man? And Batman says, Tell us where you got it. These are fear. These are not real Batman Bane. These are just other people, but John Paul Valley are seeing them as Batman Bane, his greatest fear. Now they continue to say, think he's all gone, the fear's go got him now. Nah, man, he better tell us, or there's gonna be trouble. Now, that's when we see Steel, he throws his hammer, you're a thumb. He takes these two people out. Steel shows up, and John Paul Valley says, Ugh, oh, who are you? And Steel says, stay low, kid. This will only take a minute. You see Steel, he takes out these two men. You are playing a crack. He takes out these two men and they get away. Steel says, next time I take your mask off and leave you on here on an eighth night. Breathe. Try to breathe. Jean Paul Valley looks up. Uh, he sees Steel as a fear. He is afraid of him. But Steel says, remember your name. Remember where you are. And John says, okay, okay, I can't. This is still called Gotham and still says Metropolis Gotham is gone now John Paul Valley says wait what and still stabs him he says gone like you now John Paul Valley wakes up in the iron works he pants he screams now still says take it slow the antitoxin has a real kick still working on it bit of a learning curve even for me now John Paul Valley says thank you seriously who are you Steel says, John Henry Irons, you? And John Paul Valley introduces himself. He says, Hal, the index is at eight tonight. Without protection, you should be you should be out of your mind right now. Steel says, Crane's gas doesn't hit everyone the exact same way. John Paul Valley uh, takes up Steel's mask and says, So you're immune. And Steel says, There's this theory. Says the things that some of us and our ancestors have been forced to endure the brutality and humiliation, the oppression, and the constant attacks on our humanity. Something gets us calloused inside of us so we can even function without tearing it all down. Yeah, maybe the air is filled with fear now, but for me, for me, it's just Tuesday, son. Now, John Paul Valley says, can you, I know I can't know everything you've, I, I can never really know, but can you teach me, Mr. Irons? And Steel says, I can teach you how to feel that fear, that you'll lose everything that matters at any moment through no real fall of your own. We see that Steel has lost his daughter. He's lost everyone. But he says, until then, the index is stuck at eight, and there's always more work to do. So Steel and John Paul Valley. They come together, they work together, and they're gonna push fear aside. They're gonna persevere through Metropolis, and they're gonna stop Scarecrow. This world is ruled by Scarecrow, and the fear index, fear has taken over. So guys, that was uh, Death Metal, The Multiverse Who Laughs, number one, and it was an okay issue, right? I thought it'd be a little better. First off, the idea 
I'm doing short stories and one issue about these dark multiverse stories, right? Dark worlds is a great idea. I think DC should do more of this in the future because I really like the tales of the dark multiverse right now, but those are just like one story. It's like one big story. Were these some more short stories that you could tell like multiple of them in one issue? It's actually something that DC could sell. I think a lot of DC fans would like that. You guys tell me your thoughts on that idea down below. But for the actual stories in this issue, first off, the Robin King one, it was okay. I did like the different ideas like Jon Stewart as Parallax, Martian Manager as like the alien. It was cool. But it was also a lot of, like, talking. It was a little, like, Robin King, like, uh, recapping the Death Metal events. Him talking about the origins of the training of the DC Universe. There was some filler there. But it was still a good starting off story. Now, the second story of Victor Zaz and the Doctor was really good, right? I really liked how the Doctor um, pretty much took control of the villains. The villains became the victims. And the ending of that um, story was really good. It actually shocked me a little bit. I liked how they set it all up. So yeah, that was one of my favorites. Now the third story was my favorite with the super pets turning evil and stuff. And honestly, that's enough said. You know, like the super pets get a virus, they become evil and kill people. Like that's very dark and I like it, right? <laughs> I didn't know I would like it so much, but it makes sense that that story is on the cover of this issue. Now the fourth story, and yeah, it was not as good. With Green Arrow going against Hal Jordan, and Hal Jordan and the Guardians took over the world, right? I do like seeing uh, uh, like an older Ollie. I always like seeing that. He looks dope. Um, and I do like when Hal Jordan and all Oliver Queen go against each other. But it was just such a short story with not that much substance. Now, it wasn't the worst story, though. The worst story in this collection was the final one with Azriel and Steel. Now, I do want to see Azriel and Steel team up in the DC Universe. I think that's a cool idea. But how it's shown here is kind of boring. Because, yes, they talk a little bit, but they don't have a lot of interactions. And the idea of fear taking over the world, that's not really the biggest or new idea right it's it's kind of a very broad idea it's not really exploring this issue it's kind of like okay steal Asriel while well, steel saves Asriel they team up and they're gonna try to stop this that's it not that much substance there but yeah guys yeah, so I had to rank them my favorite was super pets one uh, my second favorite was the one with Victor Zaz and the doctor my third favorite was the Robin King my second to least favorite so fourth place would be the green arrow and how how Jordan one and then my least favorite was the steel and Asriel you guys rank the stories down below overall I'm gonna give this issue a 7.5 out of 10 it was a solid issue, one that you don't have to read if you're just trying to get the most biggest stuff in Death Metal. Like, it's a skippable issue, but if you want some interesting stories here and there, then check it out. But guys, if you like the video, give a big thumbs up, comment below your thoughts on this issue, and make sure to subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss out on my next Death Metal video. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching, and peace out.